I promise you, I feel like we were just painting this car, and that's because we were. Just over a month ago, we had just done a quarter panel refinish, and we had used the Black Widow 2.0 to do the refinishing, and gosh, it looked amazing. But, well, here we are once again, and this time we're doing the whole side. Well, it looks like a basketball hoop fell on the vehicle, and we've got some repair area, and let's show you exactly what we got going on. Well, thanks again for joining me on this episode. My name is Brian and welcome to Paint Society. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be doing our blending on the front door. This is where the repair was. The basketball hoop had fallen over on top and it damaged the A pillar here. There was a dent here and some damage to this front door. So we went ahead, we had to remove the front glass so we could get full refinish inside when we did body work to it. Now you might ask yourself, why do we have to paint the whole entire side of the vehicle? Well, that's a great question. The reason why is we'll show you that this primer area, well, we're going to have to blend into the back door and this A pillar is a, connected to the actual quarter panel. And well, the proper way to refinish is no blending. Of course, insurance writes it for open blends, which we don't do. And we did a full quarter refinish and the front fender. Well, if we're doing all this, We've been there before. We might as well do the front fender as well. That way I can take my color from the door all the way into the fender. And if I have any overspray, it's gonna fall on the front of the fender. The first step is to get this clean. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, if you don't use them yet, you need to. These are microfiber tear off and you can get these at Walmart. I'll put the link in Amazon as well. And another thing, if you haven't gotten, this is the Paint Society Colab Collab. This is the pump sprayer. These are around 47 bucks each. But I have to laugh at the people to say they can get the same thing at Home Depot. You can, but it's not going to last long. These are meant for the seals not to wear out for the different solvents, solvent-based cleaners. Those really take a toll on the pump sprayer. So if you're interested, check the link in the description. Make sure we get you one. Now, this is water-based cleaner, and this is going to remove different contaminants like fallout, industrial fallout, like bird crap, fingerprints, that type of thing. So let that sit on the panel and then give it a wipe as best as you can in one direction. If you go back and forth, that's fine, but I don't want you going all over the panel. I want you in one direction. And another thing I want you to do, guys, is I want you to treat each panel individually. And by doing that, when you treat each panel individually, you can really focus on it. Now, I sprayed my primer, but I'm not actually gonna clean it yet. I'm gonna clean my blend areas, okay? Where my areas that are just scuffed clear coat, that way we don't get any sort of residue from our primer, even though we cleaned it and washed it down into our blend area, okay? So we'll leave those primer areas for last. And as we finish up towards the front, then we can go over our primer areas and we won't have any problems. Just these little techniques, guys, are gonna help you in the long run. If you have a tight blend, let's say on a dark color, this will help you. We got a lot of room here, so it wouldn't make a huge difference, but I like to show you everything I can so you guys can increase the probability and the productivity of each one of your paint jobs. Wow, that was a big word. With your solvent, this is gonna come second. This is what I like to do second because the water base takes a little bit longer to dry and this is a good way to make sure that both have been completely taken off of the actual panel. And this actually um, does not leave any streaks. The water base sometimes can leave some streaks so I just like to go ahead and knock this one out second. And as I'm doing this, guys, I'm looking at the panel. I'm making sure that everything is completely clean. I'm feeling as well, making sure I don't have any areas that are rough because if there's an area that's rough, well, you're gonna have to take some 800 grit out and give it a light scuff. You don't want any of your paintwork falling onto a rough surface. It's never too late to go and check it out and to make a little bit of a change, even if it's in the booth. This is your last chance to feel the panel. All right. I'm ready for the booth, so I got a sealer here. And that sealer we're gonna put over our primed areas. Do you need to put this on? No. If you really, really take the time to sand your primer down and make sure you have no cut throughs, then you should be fine. But my sealer is really gonna help with my color when it goes to uh, cover. That's why you put a sealer down. So I'm gonna put this down and then I have here some blending additive. I'm gonna put this over the whole entire vehicle. That's gonna smooth out the edge here. This is not the same as a 
solvent reducer that's going to blend the edge. This is going to go over the edge of the sealer and it's going to cover it and smooth it out. This is going to melt it in. So there's a little bit of a difference here. And I'm also going to use this as my, like, as a visual coat. I don't use it as a blending coat to blend the metallics in. I use it as a visual coat because when we go to mix up the paint, and you'll see here in a little bit, uh, we're going to use a different ratio. And that's really going to help us blend the paint out because we're going to over reduce it in the computer. We're going to take it to this area. Light coat. We're going to leave it. Yeah, I put red in it. All right. Now we're going to put our clear blender over it all. Over the whole thing. Okay, so we put it over the whole vehicle. You can see that sealer, it really carries. So that's why it's so important to put something over it. Now, if you don't wanna do this, you could wait 15 minutes and you could lightly scuff it with 800. You don't need to do it. Now, you notice the sealer has a little bit of red in it, right? Okay, that's gonna help with our color. You cannot just go and take red toner, follow me, or red paint and put it in your sealer. If you do that, you're gonna reduce the solvents and everything that makes up that sealer or sealer adhesion, everything, you're going to mess it up. But we have color build. So this is actually a tinted sealer or a tinted primer. And it comes in many different colors. And in this system, you can make virtually any color. And if these colors are not enough, you could take a picture with the camera and you could make a custom sealer color. Now, I would have done that, but we're out of the yellow and the green. And the thing with these sealers, sometimes you got to be careful with, is it will give you a false impression that your color is covered, especially on blues or reds. So sometimes using that gray sealer or the olive color sealer for like a red, it's going to help you know, hey, it is covered. Still a great addition to this system with sickens and less salt. Let's let that flash. Let's mix up the paint now. I'm going to show you something at the end of the mixing that's going to help you out. So this is our color here. It's called Tiger Eye Pearl. So we want to mix it up. So we're going to come here. And in this paint system, you can over reduce it. Okay. So down here at the bottom, standard reduction is two, two to one. That means two parts paint, one part of the reducer. So half of the paint is the reducer. But you can actually over mix it 70% still within this system and it will still be good. Why would you do this? This is gonna make and break those metallics up a little bit finer at the edges, so you're not gonna see that dark halo, okay? So all you would do is come over to the right for this particular, and you would add it to the formula, and you're good to go. So we're gonna mix up that paint now. I'll show you the reducer once we go to mix it up. It'll make a little bit more sense. So you got two options here. You got slow and extra slow. It's around 80 degrees. I could be fine with slow. Extra slow is gonna make it a little bit thinner. It's not gonna cover as well, but believe me, it's gonna be smoother and in the end, it's gonna look better. So right here, we have 224. That is a 70% reduction, all right? So this is the amount of reducer that we're gonna to need to add. So let's say, that, um, let's say that it was a two to one. It wouldn't have been this much, all right? It would have been, I would say, I don't know. I don't know the math 100%, but maybe like over 180 grams. Um, so we'll just come up into here and then that's our color. All right. So at this point, what we've done to the base is we've made it more transparent and we have completely slowed it down just by 
the additives that we put in the paint. So that's why it's so important to know what you're mixing into the paint. So our sealer's dry, we're gonna start to apply our paint now, and I'm gonna show you something that I do to make sure this looks pretty good. That's what we're talking about here. It's completely smooth, right? So typically this would be dry and this would all be dry. All right, so when you run your tack rag over it, it's nice and smooth. Granted, if it wasn't, it's okay. You could put 800 grit on it and smooth it out. And honestly, I might still do that after the first or second coat if I don't like the way it looks. You don't have to have everything perfect right off of the gun. You can do a little work in the booth to make sure it's right. I'm gonna get coverage on all my primer, maybe one or two coats to get coverage. And then I'm gonna extend everything out and I'm gonna lose my blend all the way back here. And I'm gonna lose my blend in the smallest part of the fender all the way into this area. That way, let's say, you know, let's say we didn't do that fender. Why not? All it is is scuffing it up, right? So now we would be forced to blend it in here and we're one panel short of painting the whole side of the car and visually looking at this car from the side and it all looks like one color. Don't take the risk, guys. Just think about how much better that's going to help you out in the booth. It really is. You know what we do now? We walk away. I don't care if you don't like it, you still walk away. You can finish it on a second coat, you can fix it up if you need. That looks good, it's blending nice. I'm happy we did the blend on the fender. Did you see that guys? It's completely covered in one coat and that's why I use sealer. If you're using just primer and once you sand that primer because you got to sand it, it's like a porous sponge. All the paint's just going to soak into it. But when you put down a sealer, it, it's not sanded. It's a non-sanding product. So it kind of skins over, so anything you put on top of it, it just sits there. Now this, this is our break. This is our break time. For real, you recording that? Is this is what you're bringing to us? This is what you bring to us? This is gonna give me diabetes. You yeah. say Snickers, they didn't have Snickers. They didn't have Snickers. No. I take the peanut one, I'm, I'm taking the peanut one. So of course I'm using my Segola with the aqua cap. Now, that was for water, but you can use it for solvent. So since it's covered, I'm gonna do one coat over these panels, and then right away, I'm gonna drop back and do a mist coat, orientation coat, that type of coat. Let's I'll drop that. A little bit more of a distance. That's it. That's it. That's it. You walk away. You walk away, you let it dry, they come back. Just doing attacking. I don't really attack too much, but I just want to get over any, um, I just want to get the overspray that might have landed at the edge of the blend here. It's not a whole lot, to be honest. And I'm not using a lot of pressure here when I do this, but um, there could have been something that got caught up. So let's just try to get it off, if anything. The first coat we're gonna put on, not full wet, medium wet. I don't spray it the way I want it to look on the first coat or else it's gonna be on the floor. I know that's what they sometimes tell you, um, but I don't, want, I don't want to do that. So <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. But I'm gonna be using um, the DVR. And this is a 4600, it's a Segola DVR for clear. That's gonna give it that orange peel texture I want. These cars come with orange peel and they come with dieback. 
I can't help the die back too much. Um, this side might be a, a touch shinier, but um, the orange peel I can match. So let's roll. Not bad. Not bad. Not perfectly wet, not perfectly dry, perfectly ready for a second coat. Oh man, this is gonna look so good. All right, this is a second coat, guys, second coat. Now you're gonna see me slow it down a little bit, apply the paint, watch the paint go on. We gotta do good here. This is the advisor's car. I actually like him. So I wanna make him look pretty good and I don't want this car coming back again. But if it does, man, we got a paint code that matches. All right, keep it moving. Low, get low. There we go.
All right, here it is after about a couple hours. We already started to pull off the tape. Man, this thing is looking really fresh, guys. I'm really happy with how clean it looks and it's got that factory texture that we want. You get that factory texture from that, uh, that DVR air cap. It's not gonna put it on completely flat and we don't want that, but we do want a little bit of that texture so it matches the rest of the vehicle. I can tell you for sure going down the road, you wouldn't even know this thing is painted. And we're gonna go ahead and get this thing assembled and we're gonna take a look at it outside and see if that statement is really true. But for now, we're gonna leave this in the boot dry overnight and then we'll check it out once it's all back and assembled. But we do have one more thing to do. We have to put the Type S emblem back on and the owner opted to go this time with the black edition and that's pretty cool. I think it's a great match for the color combo on the vehicle. Now it's a good thing you can't see both sides at one time. And here it is outside guys. Check it out man. This thing like I said looks completely untouched now nine times out of ten with every vehicle i paint there's something i wish that just went a little bit better but this is the rare one out of one car that actually turned out exactly the way i wanted i mean from the bodywork to the a pillar this thing completely looks like it came from the factory i'm really actually really happy with the way this thing looks and i'm digging the type s emblem in black now we're going to send this into the shop and he'll rebadge the whole rest of the vehicle and then get this thing all detailed up but there is one thing i want to know from you guys and please be honest with me is there something that you would have done differently with this actual job or is there something that you learned about this vehicle when i sprayed it that you didn't know at first because the intention of paint society is to help each and every one of you knock out awesome jobs and I think this is an awesome job and I think as the sun comes out kind of that we can see how awesome this beautiful tiger eye pearl looks and are you a fan of this color at first I wasn't but it's definitely growing on me and once again I want to thank each and every one of you for subscribing to this channel and learning and hitting the like button every single like and comment always inspires me to make awesome videos just like this now until the next time this vehicle comes back into the body shop hopefully never this is brian from paint society reminding you don't overthink it it's just paint i'll see you guys on the next episode